Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna talk about the two speakers in the Canto Passive Series. And that would be the Canto U Passive 5.25 and the U Passive 4 bookshelf speakers. Now, much of the build quality and the technology will be similar, but the performance of each model will differ slightly. So we'll show you how both U Passive models compare, and then we'll talk about the best use case scenarios for these and why they are great entry points if you're considering a pair of passive speakers for your existing two-channel setup, or even looking to integrate a pair into your existing home theater system. After watching this video, we also have an in-depth written version of this comparison at audiovice.com where we talk about some of our performance tests and how they sounded with different tracks. So if you want to learn more, the link to that is in the description. Now let's get started. Now the U Passive series are both available in two colors, our test units, both arrived in matte vinyl black finishes, but a vinyl white finish is also available. Both models feature rounded corners. There are no logos, branding, or grills on the speakers. And I think this gives the U-Passives an understated minimalistic look that will help it blend in with just about any room style and decor. The build quality is quite impressive, especially at these price points. The U-Passives are constructed from solid MDF cabinets that do feel sturdy and well-braced. Each U-Passive 5.25 speaker cabinet weighs almost 9 pounds, whereas the smaller U-Passive 4 weighs 5.5 pounds each. And both models feature a bottom-mounted quarter-inch 20-threaded hole that lets you securely bolt each cabinet to compatible Canto speaker stands, and this will further reduce resonances through coupling. What sets the U-Passive 5.25 apart from the U-Passive 4 is basically the size, bass output, and price. Dimensionally, the U-Passive 5.25 MDF cabinet stands almost 11 inches tall, about 7 inches wide, just a little over 8 inches deep. The U-Passive 4 is 2 inches shorter than the U-Passive 5.25 and is 5.5 inches across by 7.5 inches deep, making a pair of U-Passive 4 speakers a more compact option for desktop and tabletops where space is limited. Grills do not attach to the front of the speaker cabinets, and I think this does give the U-Passive a nice, clean, professional studio monitor look with a clear view of the woofer and the tweeter. The U-Passive 5.25 consists of a 5 and a quarter inch high-strength Kevlar woofer, hence the name Passive 5.25. For comparison, the U-Passive 4 consists of a 4 inch Kevlar woofer, but both models are complemented with the same 1 inch silk dome tweeter. Both models also feature a tuned bass port on the back of their enclosures to produce tight bass with low distortion and high quality knurled speaker binding posts that connect with an integrated amplifier or a home theater receiver. Now due to the compact sizes, I can see the U passive speakers working great on a desktop with a dedicated DAC amp combo or with a two channel listening station and a turntable. The room where we tested the U-Passive series was a typical medium-sized living space with an open floor plan that also connected to the kitchen. With our movie watching session, both models reproduce good low end. This was especially present on special effects. Both models have the same high performance tweeter like we said, so the treble response goes up to 20 kilohertz. With both the U-Passive 5.25 and the U-Passive 4, that one inch silk dome tweeter produced smooth, natural treble that was pretty good for binge watching movies back to back without fatiguing my ears. The U-Passive 4's four inch Kevlar woofer specs out at 60 hertz. Now, Canto doesn't provide a plus or minus point on either model, so we're not sure if bass really gets that low, but the impact is pretty good for their size. Now, on the other hand, the larger five and a quarter inch Kevlar woofer in the U-Passive 5.25 specs out with slightly deeper bass down to 50 hertz. Now, we always recommend using a good subwoofer for the best bass performance, but even without Dolby Atmos or a sub, we were really impressed with the sound coming out of these small, compact bookshelf speakers. Now, of course, these do have limitations, so if you are looking for better cinematic performance for your two-channel experience on movies, there are better passive speakers to consider from Klipsch, Paradigm, Bowers & Wilkins, and more. All right, next, we knew we had to demo some great music, so we played a lot of different genres, and while everything we played filled the room with good sound, 
we notice modern recordings really shined on these. One of the tracks that stood out was The Less I Know, The Better, which was released in 2015 by Tame Impala. The U Passive 4 did a good job presenting the mid-range frequencies so that vocals and rhythm sections stood out clearly and musically. Drums in particular sounded fantastic on these little speakers. The kick and snare drums had a tuneful sense of timing that was very easy to get lost in. Switching over to the U Passive 5.25, they presented a wider soundstage with more separation in the stereo image that sounded just a little bit closer to the experience of a live concert. Next, the Cambridge Audio AXA35 integrated amplifier has a good moving magnet phono preamp built in, so we use that one to test the U passives with a turntable in our open room setting. We listen to a lot of records with these speakers, and overall, since tweeters are identical in these, the differences were pretty nominal. The records we play on U passives had natural sounding treble, but when we switched over to the U passive 5.25, again, we noticed immediately the larger woofer reproduced more bottom end and the wider soundstage suited our larger room slightly better than the more compact U Passive 4. Having said that, while the U Passive 4 understandably didn't present as much bottom end weight, it did perform a whole lot better than anticipated as a tabletop setup in our living room space. So the decision really comes down to the size of your room. While these are great in a variety of applications, I gotta say the U Passive 5.25 is the better bookshelf option if you have the space and you wanna enhance your TV sound with louder output, deeper bass, better stereo separation, and improved dynamics. However, in a room where space is more limited, the smaller U Passive 4 shined on a tabletop with a DAC amp combo and a dedicated record player. Overall, I think the U passive speakers are great entry points into better sound with your two channel gear. I mean, for anyone with a hand-me-down AV receiver or an existing surround sound setup, either model will work extremely well with the gear you already have. Now, while these are very inexpensive, as we said, they do have limitations. So if you're looking for the best sound available, there are better options to consider. But at these prices, I mean, both models deliver better than good performance and the value Canto packages into these is just fantastic. Plus the diverse ecosystem of compatible speaker stands and other really cool accessories by Canto, it means you'll also have matching aesthetics that will grow with your existing setup. So if you have any questions about which model is the right one for your two channel listening setup with music or even movies, give us a call chat with one of our audio experts, and we'll be happy to point you in the right direction. All right, thanks for watching, guys. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, and also check out the playlist section on our channel to easily find all the content you're looking for on anything home audio or home theater related. We'll see you next time.